Welcome everyone to our 2024 Axiom Accountability Webinar. Today's May 29th, 2024. I'm Ed Cunningham. I'm one of the Aware Product Managers for Eduphoria. Hello everyone, I'm Jeremy Wagner. I'm also a Product Manager for Aware with Eduphoria. Hi everyone, I'm Penny Kimbrough and I'm a Program Coordinator at Region 10. Nice to see everybody here today. Uh, this is a pre-recorded webinar. And um, you can, of course, visit our YouTube channel for any additional comment content for our other webinars. And so today we're going to be talking about Axiom. We're going to talk about what Axiom is and is not. We're also going to talk about some uh, updates, some new features that we that y'all have been asking for that we have added. And we're going to see some screenshots of what Axiom can do. Next. So let's start by talking about what Axiom is. So Axiom is an accountability tool that leverage, leverages your data in Edgeforia. It's offering your district administrators and principals some clear and actionable accountability projections. It really helps you understand the meaning behind your accountability ratings, and it also empowers you to take some concrete steps towards um, improving your student achievement. This year, when we worked with principals um, and district administrators, they've really shared about how it helps them understand um, what their ratings are, and it kind of gives them meaning, and it also helps them create monitor groups, which significantly limits um, or significantly helps them um, with being able to create, group, create reports that will help monitor students and then take some uh, clear, actionable steps towards student achievement data. Within AWARE reporting, um, of course, we have some of the tools that you're used to, like Quick Views, which is a really powerful tool to do a bunch of different things with all the local data and imported data that you have. Within the context of this webinar, though, think of Quick Views and how it can be a support for Axiom and even how it integrates with Axiom for you to look at uh, various things like Star Data and Telpass. Um, with Axiom, uh, like Penny just mentioned, you can use Axiom to really help generate monitor groups. And within Aware, you can actually edit and, and update those monitor groups that you built in Axiom for ongoing changes throughout the year and uh, using them to help you with potentially those high focus groups as you identify. And we'll show you how to do and set those up uh, in just a little bit. And uh, within Aware, we also have student forms where you can be very intentional about your documentation for areas and uh, with things like House Bill 14, 16, and so on. With Axiom, powered by AWARE and partnered with AWARE reporting options and student monitoring options, you have a lot of tools at your disposal. However, we do want to emphasize, like we do every year, that only the Texas Education Agency can assign campus and district ratings and distinctions. We are projecting based on available data. You notice it's all bold faced over there in the Axiom section, based on available data. And we've got a lot of it available to us, but we are projecting those based off what we have. And so we want to emphasize like we do every year that these third party projections, we're the third party, should not be presented to your school board. And this is something that of course you know, but also you'll be talking with your superintendent and with various people in the cabinet and with principals and the other leadership folks on the campuses. And so you wanna make sure that they know that these are tools meant for internal to your district needs while you wait for formal accountability ratings from TEA. So these are not to be presented to the school board. You know that thing where you, uh, you get a uh, warning about something and it's because somebody's done it, this is that warning. So the source that we used for mathing the math here in 2024 accountability is of course TEA's 2024 accountability manual. You're watching this recording, you also have access to these slides. Um, and so this should be a link that you can use that takes you directly to the account accountability manual and uh, all the resources that we use. Of course, answering the biggest question first, when will Axiom be available? We're aiming for early June. We know that your EOC files, your final files, your not, not final, but the form, uh, final formats, not the early files, but the preliminary files that use a full TXT format will be available in early June. And also sometime in early to mid June, all of your TEAL data for CCMR, 
for graduation type data. And we'll show you how to enter that into the system in a minute, but that's gonna be available for you in early June. So we need to have all the updates available. If you were to log in right now, when this webinar is published, you won't see anything for Axiom. It's under construction, except for a link to TEA. And then once we release it, that will go away and Axiom will be back. So let's talk about the updates for 2024. First of all, this is the main page of Axiom. When Axiom is released for 2024, the under construction page will go away and you will see this. So overall page for your district, it has the uh, projected ratings for the three domains with the school progress domain representing the best of domain 2A or domain 2B. You can click on the various headers to get to more specific data within those domains. And you can also use the school drop down on the bottom left to pick a specific school that you want to look at. If you're logged in as a principal or other school leader who has Axiom access, you will see the school data for which you have that access. You also have a graphs and report section and a setting section. And I'm going to talk about that next. So on the main page in the settings section, which is in the bottom right of that page, you have four main options. The first option to configure schools is where you check all the settings for the schools. I'm gonna show you that page after this. Next, you have the ability to audit your data. That is, look at which files are being used from STAR and TELPASS, as well as recalculate. So speaking a little bit about data file management, as you get your STAR files, you load them in using the normal processes in AWARE. What's cool about this view data files page is it will actually show you what file is being used. So for example, when you get your preliminary three through eight file, for example, and then maybe later in the summer, you get a revised final three through eight file, it will actually show you that it's using the final file, which has overwritten the three through eight preliminary file. That's the kind of thing that this page can be used for. It'll also help you see, oh, you're missing telpass, for example, or something like that. When I'm making a little note about the recalculate data, we got a number of uh, tickets throughout the year reporting issues with their data. And we ourselves were also guilty of forgetting, oh, you have to click, click this button first. So let me talk a little bit about the way Axiom works. There's a giant data table sitting behind the scenes that has all of your accountability relevant data. And we keep that data table full so that when you click on anything in Axiom, it doesn't have to perform the calculation in real time. It's actually really cool how we do that. However, anytime you make a change, new data files, change something related to your configuration settings for your schools, you're gonna need to click this recalculate button in order to repopulate that table. You do it one time, you commit to the click, you wait for the process to run, and then Axiom will be updated with those changes. So this is a very important first step in, in troubleshooting as well. If something looks a little bit fishy in your data, something looks weird, go ahead and click this button and see if that fixes it. And then if not, you can report that to our support. And we'll show you about that at the end of the slideshow. This last option, limited access. If you are a principal or other school leader with the aware right to analyze accountability data, you will not see the limited access button because the limited access button is there to prevent school level Axiom users from seeing Axiom until district level Axiom users are ready for people to see it. This gives you as a district person, the ability to manage Axiom before letting other people see it. Yeah. I, this I limited think... access button is really cool because it allows you to limit the access for school level users who have the aware right to analyze account accountability data, while you, the district level user with the aware right for analyzing accountability data, continue to maintain while you're getting your files imported and while you're updating the school configurations. So you put a little check in here and that will limit the access for those school level folks. And then when all the data's in and you're ready and you've clicked that recalculate button, you uncheck it and everybody has access. So let's talk a little bit about the configuring schools page and the settings. Here you have a list of all the schools in your district, as well as the relevant information across the domains necessary for calculating and projecting those ratings. The school type 
eco disc percentage, total enrollment, and three through 12 enrollment should be pre-populated because we've uh, imported the data from TEA's website based off of a spreadsheet that they've made available to everybody. However, we would highly recommend that you go in and check this for accuracy. Please go in, look at your school configurations for type, eco disc percentage, total enrollment, and three through 12 enrollment. The first group and second group, which relate to the domain three accountability projections, cannot be pre-populated based off of available data that we have. So you will need to go in and pre-configure these for each of your schools based off of your 2023 accountability lowest performing groups. Please refer to the accountability manual to know more about your first and second group management. The enter additional data button will be available for the district and for schools with graduating and CCMR data so that you can enter the domain one and domain three relevant data. Now this is an older screenshot, so you'll notice wrong years under the graduation and CCMR at the bottom, but when Axiom updates for your school and for your district, this will have the correct uh, years there. And you'll use the information that you download from Teal in early or mid June when it's available to populate this. Also on the main page, are a collection of graphs and reports that are kind of cool. So I'm gonna run through these very briefly. There's words on the screen, but I wanna talk a little bit about them and then Jeremy's gonna uh, show you some screenshots of some of them. The student list table is in my opinion, the best feature of all of Axiom because it is every single student record that is used for assessment related data in Axiom, that's star data, and also information about previous year star data when it comes to um, the academic achievement domain 2A. It's a really cool uh, a table that has some uh, filters that you can use for creating those monitor groups. The domain summary report is a nice all-in-one report for that um, you print it out, you take it to you know your superintendent or something like that, and it's got all of the just overall and domain calculations for every single campus without any of the extra uh, data. The custom star summary report is a cool way of looking at star data without having to go into quick views and make and manage your own quick views. Um, it, it's a, it's a one-stop shop for just sort of overview data related to star performance. It's kind of cool. If you like to kill trees, you can print every single piece of data in Axiom and one giant accountability reports. Um, I actually don't have the numbers on how many people click this report, um, but it does use a lot of paper. You want to print it. And finally, new this year, and Jeremy will show this to you, is the HB 1416 student list version of the student list table, which will take you straight to that table with a filter in place. All right. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the student list table. What we see here is just the header or the actual top portion of that student list. And we don't have students listed here because of course we can't show you like actual district data. So pretend on the bottom, you actually had student names, IDs, enrollment, et cetera, all the way down. Um, starting at the top of this header, um, anytime you've applied a filter, you've done anything to this student list, you can print it um, as a PDF or export it uh, as a, a spreadsheet to Excel. And uh, like Ed said, uh, there's a great opportunity here if you're in the 30,000 plus student range um, to, to potentially print quite a few pages here. So use that with caution. And then we have the ability to create a monitor group. Now, creating a monitor group from this page is a really powerful way for you to curate a list for whatever purposes you have uh, a need for in a particular monitor group. And when you click that create a monitor group button, it will actually generate a monitor group. Now, give the system a good solid 10, 15 seconds. And after you've clicked that button, go to your monitor group uh, uh, Go to your monitor group button on the left navigation in AWARE, and then you'll actually see the monitor group just populated with a generic name. And I highly recommend if you're going to create more than one monitor group from here, generate one monitor group at a time and then go to the monitor group section in AWARE and then edit it and rename it. Um, it's not going to capture any of the, in the title of the uh, monitor group, it's not going to capture what it is that you filtered to or anything like that. So create one, 
go edit it, rename it, come back, create a new one, go edit it, rename it. And then the filters button right there actually collapses and uh, uh, collapses and hides or expands and shows the filters. As you see, there's a whole bunch of them there. And sometimes when you're trying to cruise through a list of kids, um, you want to collapse it so that you can uh, have a little more real estate on your screen to see which kids you actually have selected or narrowed into. Now, uh, I'm going to go through kind of a use case on how uh, you can potentially use uh, this particular set of filters to actually generate and create your monitor groups. And the first section I want to talk about um, is the high focus filter. And so with the high focus filter, it uh, will default to not set, but say you've gone in and like Ed said, you've actually selected your high focus groups um, and on one of the previous configuration screens, and you can actually click that, go and select yes. And I want to get a list of all of my kids that are high focus kids. And then I want to generate it potentially and separate it out potentially even more of one of those other filters. I've got my high focus kids. Yes, I see my yes kids. I go hit that create monitor group button. Then I'm going to go back to my monitor groups. I'm going to rename that one real fast, high focus. Then I'm going to come back. Um, that ability to do that really gives you a really great chance to create nuanced list of kids for your monitoring for House Bill 1416 or any other um, sort of like accountability thing you're being held uh, uh, to basically monitor students and make sure that they're progressing. The next filter I want to talk about was new last year, and technically High Focus was new last year as well. Um, but this one is really helpful in terms of potentially troubleshooting. Why is it that uh, one or two or even several kids aren't necessarily calculating the way that I need to? Well, the previous performance level has to be in the system in order for you to get an actual growth or progress calculation in, in some of the domains within Axiom. And so you can actually use this filter and change it from not set to potentially blank. And if I go to blank, it will refine my list and show me which kids don't have a previous performance level. That will help you curate that list. You can export it to Excel or wherever you need to, and then go do some investigating. Do I actually have that data somewhere? If I have it, maybe I need to go recalculate, or maybe I need to re-import something. Um, so that previous performance level filter can be really powerful for the troubleshooting aspect of maybe um, it's not quite calculating the way I need to. The next set of filters I want to talk about in kind of a lump. It's all of the various performance levels like approaches, meets, masters. When using these, these are the filters we were talking about when we mentioned that there's the link um, on the, the homepage for Axiom for the House Bill 1416 student list. It's going to go ahead and preset approaches, meets, and masters to no. Um, because with that list, when you click that, you want to know which kids uh, did not meet the expectation in one or more of those star tests. And so you click that list and it's going to pre-populate these filters to that. And then I can go and use like the testing campus to filter it down by campus and create various monitor groups by campus or keep it district wide um, as, as whatever your district requires so that you can use it for whatever's best for you in your district. Moving down, um, showing you something that's new within the student list table for this year, we've created, and, and there's some orange blocks here trying to block off some specific district information in our testing, um, but you can see on the left, amongst all those orangey yellow blocks, there's a little triangle that's a warning label. If you hover over that, it says data needs recalculation. This is a new feature we've added to help you troubleshoot so that if there's something wrong, if there's a mismatch in what the system is reading is needed within Axiom or exists within Axiom and exists within AWARE for imports, say data exists in one place but not in the other, if there's a mismatch, this will catch it and it'll let you know, hey, a calculation is probably needed, a recalculation is probably needed so that you can clear this particular student and that, that student or collection of students with that warning could be throwing off your calculation. So be in the lookout for that little triangle. As Ed mentioned before, you've also got the domain summary report, which is uh, just a great way for you to get some very the high level, like 60,000 foot level information broken down by campus. And so you got your district rating along the top and you've got your campus ratings all the way down. So this is kind of a good, just one stop shop at a glance on how are my scores uh, within you know each of the domains and overall um, with a potential letter grade. And remember, great opportunity to just remind you, these are projections. Only TEA can actually give you that final thing. We're not doing predictions. Um, we're trying to give you an idea of what you might expect. 
All right, we're gonna pick up speed just a little bit and we're gonna show you just some screenshots of some of the various domains. So starting uh, with the actual uh, summary report, uh, this is, uh, like I said, uh, the, the, like we were saying before, this is kind of where you start and you get that overall score. And then student achievement domain one, school progress domain two, and that one's gonna show you the best of the two. And then finally domain three, closing the gaps. Here you can click any of the uh, headers for each of the domains. So say I wanted to go look just at student achievement, I click those words student achievement. And at the bottom, uh, like I had mentioned before, you see a warning there. That warning will be updated uh, as we finish construction with the appropriate years. Um, but you can get a quick glance here on where am I sitting as far as my scores for each of the domains and where do I want to take a deeper dive. Diving into domain one, if I clicked that student achievement one, it's going to isolate just domain one. It's going to give me the information from my star scores for that domain, uh, my CCMR calculations for the applicable high schools within this domain, and the graduation rate for the applicable high schools as well. Um, you get a little breakdown of some of the numbers down below so that if you're seeing things that uh, uh, you're just looking for more detail, where are these numbers coming from? Uh, Open up that manual, have it set beside you, and you can look at how the numbers are spread out and compare that to some of the rules and uh, see how the percentages are breaking down. Continuing down that page, you can actually see those calculations kind of like grain, a little more granular. So you can see those CCMR points, um, and then it gives you both not only the component score, but the actual scaled score uh, with the various formulas and applications of the rules within the law for the accountability. Um, this is also a great place for you to see potential gaps and oh my gosh, I'm not seeing like my graduation rates here or uh, something like that. So you can go back and note, oh, I need to probably go configure that in one of the other spaces uh, on the landing page. Moving down just a little further on domain one, we actually have an area where you see proportional calculations. Um, this proportional calculations table actually has a new feature now where the score column, the number is actually a link now. If I were to click it, it will take me back to the student list table, but it's going to show me the students on that campus uh, with the relevant scores for that campus when I click that score. So it's, it's just an extra layer of navigation for you to, oh, here's something interesting within the table. I'm going to click that score and it'll take me back to the student list. So uh, clicking on domain two on the landing page will bring you to this one where you can actually see your domain two broken out where you've got your overall score and then the domain two A and two B scores separated out. Um, beneath that, you can see tables where you get a little more granular data. Um, so you can kind of analyze that and see how things are broken up across both subjects, math and reading, and then your relative performance. Moving down a little bit further on that page, you get a uh, academic growth chart, which has got some lovely color to it. And you see within each section of this chart, the prior year's performance with the compared to current year's performance. And so within each of those cells, you can see any kids that fall into the red ranges are going to get you zero points. Any that are in yellow get you half a point and any in green are going to get you a full point. And it's broken down, you can see it with both subjects within reading and then within math separated out. Um, you can click any of these numbers as well and it'll take you to the student list uh, filtered to the section that you clicked on. Beneath the academic growth chart, you have the accelerated learning points. And uh, remember, these are for those kids that got exceptional growth if they didn't meet the expectation last year. Next is domain three, closing the gaps. Um, as you can see within closing the gaps, there's a lot of various components and parts to it. And so you can see how it's broken out to the academic achievement, the growth, the English language proficiency, and the actual student success on STAR. And as you scroll down on that page, you'll see tables that line out the numbers that came out to give you each of those scores. Scrolling down even further, um, you can see uh, just more examples of how those numbers are being generated and brought to the surface to give you your overall score. The two lowest performing groups that you managed on your school configuration table should be showing up here between all students and high focus. It's super important that you make sure that the correct two groups are selected for each school based off of 2023 accountability data and uh, they'll populate here. If you do need to make a change to those schools, you'll have to click recalculate in order to make this get updated. 
And with that, we'll pass it over to Penny. Hi, everybody. So this year, we're going to be able to offer you a lot of support. The first thing that you're going to be able to do is to go online and look at some help documents for getting started and entering uh, your domain uh, one and domain three uh, configurations in also keeping you updated with any software updates or any uh, frequently asked questions that will be available for you online. The second place that you'll be able to get some support is through our Edgeforia customer success team. If you will put in a support ticket through Edgeforia, they'll be able to answer any technical troubleshooting or uh, calculation concerns that you see. If, if you notice that something's not quite right in Axiom, they'll be able to help you with that. And then here at the Service Center, um, we'll also be able to help you with answers um, to your accountability questions. For example, if you're not um, able to, uh, if you see notice that your high, high focus group is not uh, populating correctly, or it's a different high focus group, or or you notice that your um, two lowest performing groups aren't in there correctly, um, we can help you look through your TIDE and TEAL documents um, to be able to make sure that that is correct. And you can also, um, look at Accountability Connect with John Fezzeden. He is the master of all accountability. So please, you can reach out to him and ask him some of those questions as well. Yeah, so to be clear, if you have an Axiom question, you call Eduphoria. If you have a general accountability question, you have access to Service Center. And if you are a current Accountability Connect member, John Fezzeden is absolutely your accountability uh, source. Another place um, that we're going to be able to help you and for you to be able to connect with us about Axiom is on Thursdays in June and July. We're going to have some office hours at from 10 to 11. We're going to, not only going to be addressing any kind of questions you have or any um, any any personalized help that you need. We're also going to be looking at uh, different topics. So we're going to talk about you know just the essentials of Axiom and how to get started. We're also going to be looking at how to measure your tier one and tier two instruction through your domain two calculations. And we're going to be looking at that House Bill 1416 and the student list table and a lot more topics that come up. So if you would like to register for those sessions, make sure that you use the bit.ly and it is case sensitive. So bit.ly um, 2024 capitalized A-X-I-O-M. All right, if you have any questions related to anything we talked about or any other general aware questions, you can, of course, contact training at edgeforia.net. Thank you for watching this webinar. If you have any final questions about Axiom, about AWARE, or anything Eduphoria offers, please be sure to shoot an email over to training at edgeforia.net.